Let's deep dive today on the roommate situation. I know that many of you are dealing with the roommate situation right now in your marriage. You've been dealing with it for a long time. There's the elephant in the room, whatever it's about. You don't know how to talk about it. You don't know how to bring up the subject matter. You don't know how to bridge the subject matter. And so it's becoming bigger than life. And so there's a lot of people out there that are saying, oh, you should go on date night. Oh, you should make dinner for each other. They have these concocted ideas that are gonna get us past the big elephant in the room but it's just not at all solving the issue, okay? It's not giving solution at all. They're like throwing something at the wall to see what sticks. And quite honestly, I'm sure that many of you have gone on date nights. You've probably gone on plenty of date nights, but it hasn't cured the problem. So how do we get to a situation where we actually begin to find solution? And that's a big question. When I look at all the videos and I look at the comments, I even see spouses commenting on their spouse's comments. I can't believe my spouse is here talking about the roommate situation. I'm so-and-so's wife or I'm so-and-so's husband. Very interesting. So what do we do? How do we begin to open the doors to communication? I know that some of you say, well, I can't talk about their job or their career or their lack of job or their lack of working or their lack of career. Or I can't talk about the sex that hasn't been existing in the marriage in 10 years. Anytime I try to bring that up, that's a problem or the communication factor in the marriage where the communication doesn't seem to exist. It seems that all you talk about is what the cat does or what the bird's doing or what the dog's doing or what the kids are doing or what the neighbors are doing or what your friends are doing, anything except for what you and your spouse is doing. And this can be overwhelming. So how do we begin to bridge the gap of communication? Because I think that's one of the biggest issues we have here. It's the hallmark of the issue of the roommate situation is this has gone unchecked for so long. At the moment when it happened, you remember it, but from then on out, it got hazy. It got, it got kind of hazy from the moment it started until now. And I know that many of you have been kicking that can down the road. Well, it'll get better at some point. It's not that big of a deal. You know, it's okay. We're 70, 30, 70% going well. It's okay. And you keep kicking that can down the road because of many reasons why, because you're fearful of change. You've been married for so long. It would be a complete and utter change. You have children and you don't want to break up the family. Or there's that fear of being alone. You don't want to live by yourself. You don't want to do it. And so you're like, God, I'll do whatever I have to do to not be alone. But I do think that that big issue has to be discussed. And I've realized that the only way to begin discussion is to begin to speak from our truth. And the hardest thing to do is that when we hold back re this resentment or we hold back our feelings for a long period of time, it usually comes out like really crappy. So when we first try to speak our truth, it comes out either in a yell or a scream or 200 words a minute or whatever that looks like that just doesn't convey your power or your conviction. It actually conveys quite the opposite. And so I've realized that in order to really compose ourselves, and I know this sounds crazy, I think you almost have to put together a thought process or write down a script. And I know that might sound odd because you're saying, why would I have to write that down? But I think that a lot of times, because we have so many thoughts in our head, we don't know where to begin. And we have so many parts to cover that it begins, it becomes overwhelming. And so we have to limit the first discussion of this big topic to just a little bit. We can't have two hours soliloquy. We can't have, you know, this entire lament set session or we're not, we don't also want to have any sort of argument or fight. Because remember, if we've been dealing with this problem for as long as it is, some of us or one of us or both of us are avoidant in the process. And so the avoidant is going to do what? Is going to shut down in the process of an argument. So how do you come to the table without a fight? And I know that many of you say, well, no matter what I say, even if I don't raise my voice, my spouse feels like I'm fighting them because I'm just bringing it up. And in that case, it's really hard because if you can't even bridge the subject, then what do you do? And that's really tough. And it's hard to give you answers to that because if you really can't even speak at all about the subject without that person getting angry or mad or closing the door or leaving the house, that's really challenging because they've literally shut down communication. And in the process of them doing this and shutting down that communication, they're controlling your happiness. They're controlling the marriage and they're controlling the conversation. And if that's been happening for a long period of time, I need you to begin to see that as real control because they're controlling you and the situation because they're controlling the narrative and the dialogue. So whatever's being said, dialogue is being controlled by them. 
and then they can control their narrative in their own head to make themselves feel better about the situation. I found that we have to be able to have somebody in our life that is at least open to communication to some degree. And people don't want to hear these big ticket items. Nobody wants to hear, hey, I'm really upset with you that you haven't worked in so long. Um, and I've been carrying all the weight and it's really challenging for me. Uh, you know, somebody doesn't want to hear the fact that, hey, I really would like to have, you know, sex in my marriage. We're not doing this. It's not happening. How do we begin to open those lines of communication? And these are real, real, real subject matters. And the communication is key. For many of you, you found a friend or a support group or a friend of yours at work that you can communicate with. And that's great that you have that outside source. But I think at the same time, you would also like to have communication with your spouse. And when we sit, when we have that open dialogue, it's so great, but it's so hard to get to because many of you have literally over time, maybe in the beginning of the relationship, y'all talked about everything. You talked about the relationship. You talked about experiences, whatever that was. And then if you had kids, then the conversation usually turned into what the kids were doing, what the kids are doing, you know, what the kids have going on that day. What's their next practice? What's their school like? If you have dogs or, or pets, it's the same type of thing. And so understanding that. And so how do we bring the conversation back from these other people or these other animals and back into you and this person? And I found that the one thing that we can do is be very calm in our expression of what we want. Um, but I think that you need to write down on a piece of paper or type out and go through it. What is it that you actually want to achieve from this conversation? And first off, I want you to remember expectations need to be thrown out the window. You don't want to sit there and say, Hey, I'm going to have sex by X, Y, Z, or Hey, I'm going to have a conversation by X, Y, Z, or this person's going to get a job or this person's going to hold up their end of the bargain. You don't want to have any expectations. Basically right now we're, we're just putting it out there so that we're speaking our truth. So we don't have regret. Okay. And the best thing that I've realized is you want to give one point of light. You remember what you remember that the point of light, one point of light or two points in the very first conversation you have to begin the conversation dialogue. And I've also realized that you're not going to solve anything in one conversation. You're not going to solve anything in two or three conversations. It might take several conversations to begin to open up the line of communication in order to even begin to find solution. And so that's what I really want you to think about in today's videos. How do I, how do I open up the line of communication where this person is not going to shut down? And if they do shut down immediately, it's something that you positively have to call out. Hey, every time I try to bridge this conversation, you shut me down, you shut me out, you leave, you run, you turn off your ears, you turn off your, you know, you gotta, you gotta say it too, because when we keep allowing somebody to run that type of control in our life, they're controlling everything and they're not wanting to communicate because it's working for them for whatever reason it is, because they don't want to deal with their own emotions or their own fears that's co-creating this reality. And so when we got to get down to brass tacks, we got to figure out what is the one thing I want to convey in this conversation right now? What's the one takeaway? And I want you to look at each one of these conversations like that. I just want to put, I want to plant one seed today, just one. And remember all conversations don't always have to have dialogue. So you can sit there and say what you feel in a positive way, plant one seed. They don't have to respond back as long as they're listening and are paying attention, let it sink in. And I've realized that too, is that if you're willing to let it sink in and let them begin to understand and analyze the situation for themselves and you keep planting those little seeds, you can get somewhere. But there is a timeline as well. And so that's one of the things that we'll talk about in another video because you have to give yourself a timeline, but planting these seeds, writing up a, like an outline for maybe a five to 10 minute conversation about what you want to talk about in a positive, pleasant environment that's safe for everybody and introducing it. It's going to be really hard because it's going to be stressful. You're probably going to feel weird. You're going to feel like you have butterflies or you're stressed out or you're anxious. Or you don't want to talk about it. But again, remember all that energy has been building up inside of you over a period of time. And we have to talk about it, but if we're aggressive or angry or fighting with that person, remember their defense mechanism is going to shut them down and it's going to shut down the conversation. But again, at that point, you can even say, Hey, I see it. I am feeling that you are shutting down right now. Not, Oh, you're shutting down. I see that you're, you're doing this. No, it's like, I'm feeling that you're shutting down right now. I just want to make one comment here. You know, let's talk later. Um, and that's what you can do. And you can kind of build up from there. That's the best 
concept is building up from each conversation, letting them kind of soak it in and take it in over time. Because remember, some people can process very quickly as some people can process not very quickly. So some people, it might take three weeks to sink in. Some people might take two hours to sink in. You have to understand how your spouse reacts and how they process information from you and how avoidant they are and how angry they are possibly, but also maybe how, how they're willing to take that information. But the more peaceful and the more organized conversation in a more of a calm manner is the only way that you're gonna get the information across for the person to even listen. Because first of all, they have to listen to be able to soak it in. And then they have to start thinking about how that connects to them. And then they have to start figuring out what they're gonna do to make change. I hope this video has helped you. I have more videos coming out on the roommate situation and dealing with the roommate situation and how to solve these problems that we find ourselves in. Don't forget to live your true life.